Hello, welcome to the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. Today is Friday the 19th of February 2021 and this is episode 43. I'm Kate. You can find me on Instagram as Kate underscore Hawthorne Cottage Craft, on Ravelry as a runner bean and there's a Ravelry group for the podcast called Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. I also have a Ko-fi account where you can support the podcast and I have appreciated all the support that I've received there already. The links to everywhere you can find me are in the description box below. You're very welcome. If you're a new viewer, it's lovely to see you. I'm thrilled that you're trying out the podcast. I hope you feel very welcome here and enjoy what you see and hear and feel very much part of the group. If you do enjoy it, please like and subscribe. And if you're a returning viewer, you're most welcome back. It's lovely to have you back again and sharing a little more of your time with me. I appreciate it all. I hope you all have your cuppa and your knitting to hand and we can chat about what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. But before I get into what I have been working on, uh, I just want to remind you about episode 42, uh, just a little bit of a throwback. In episode 42, I announced a giveaway for the 5,000 subscriber, which became the 6,000 subscriber giveaway. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. But if you missed that episode, you might want to go back. Um, there's a lovely giveaway for, um, as I said, for the subs subscriptions for uh, as a thank you. I got my words out as a thank you to subscribing and supporting the podcast. I had a prompt there, which is your dream project. So if you're interested in uh, taking part in that giveaway, you need to go back to episode 42 and put your comment in below that uh, telling me what your dream project is. And it has been fabulous reading through those so far. Um, it's so interesting and I'm getting kernels of ideas for knit alongs because there, there are themes starting to run through it and it's just fabulous to to see what everybody's hoping to knit and trying to get courage to knit and do you know what we can knit anything if we're wrong we can rip it back but we can re-knit it that's the joy of knitting so we all have our dream knits and it's lovely to see those if you enter that giveaway, we have some beautiful prizes and I want to remind you of what those are. Some of the yarn dyers in Northern Ireland very kindly donated uh, some prizes. And what I'm going to do on the first episode in March, the first proper uh, podcast episode, I will pull a prize with random number generator from all those comments on episode 42. And there are six prizes um, up for grabs. There's this beautiful skein of yarn from Woolly Adventures. It's a merino nylon mix. And they've called it Secret Lagoon with all these greeny blues. And there is a little set of bulb markers. So those are in there. There's this beautiful skein entitled Galway from Irish Artisan Yarn and it's again a superwash merino nylon mix. We have quite a lot of blue from Yo Mama. This is her Ship of Fools colourway, her ultimate sock, which is 7525 blue faced, superwash blue faced Leicester. And nylon. Lovely autumnal colours, I think. It's called Woodstock, the colourway, and it's from Giddy Ant Yarns. And this is 100% Corrie Deal, which is perfect. Even though there's no nylon, this is a perfect sock yarn. And we have, of course, some fine fish yarns. There's no name in this colourway but and look at those colours. Real different range of colours in there. So there'll be five winners, one of for each of these. And also there's a little bag that I have made, a little sock bag. 
knitting themed it's a drawstring bag and a set of sock knitting needles or knitting needles that can be used for socks they're a 2.5 mil which is my go-to sock needle so those are the prizes that are up for grabs for the subscriber giveaway and again if you want to take part in that you need to go back to 40 episode 42 and i'll link that uh, up above somewhere and you can comment there and that's where the prizes will be drawn from you've still a couple of weeks so there's there's plenty of time to do that and again thank you to everybody who has already subscribed so that's that's that bit done <laughs> let's talk about knitting it's much easier talking about knitting what have I been working on for the last two weeks? I have a, I could almost call it a finished object, but it's not really. It's, it's in between a work in progress and a finished object, if there is such a thing. This literally came off my needles today, just before I recorded. So it hasn't had any ends woven in and it obviously hasn't been blocked. But I have completed my Charmin shawl. I will put the name of this shawl at the bottom of the screen. It's a Gaelic word. And I, in this part of the world, I think the pronunciation is Charmin. I'm not a Gaelic speaker, but uh, I think it's Charmin. And the design is by Nat Redwolf, who is Wolf and Fawn Knit. And I'll put a picture of the, the pattern in here. So this is my finished shawl, obviously with tails hanging and it hasn't been blocked out yet. I started this shawl on the 21st of June uh, last year, Midsummer's night. And I wanted a lovely big squishy shawl and this fit the bill completely. It's a, a double knit um, fabric, so it really is going to be a squishy shawl. And even pre-blocking, it's a big shawl, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted something to really wrap around myself. I knit it on a 4.5 mil needle. And I think it has come out really well even pre-block. The yarn that I used is John Arbin, Knit by Numbers. And I wanted to talk a wee bit about it. I'll show you the, this is the label, Knit by Numbers, John Arbin, and it's the DK. There's a four ply version, I think, of Knit by Numbers. But this is the DK. And I have used this before. And I think it's beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's 100% merino. And I've actually got the first project that I used it for here. And this was a sweater that I knit, it's all creased, a sweater that I knit in 2017. It was my Rhinebeck sweater. It's the Artichoke French by Lauren Elkin. And I used um, the John Arbin Knit by Numbers to knit this. And it is really soft, soft yarn. But I had found that because it's 100% merino and so soft, and I think because of the way it's spun, and I am not technical in that way at all, it pills very easily. And you can see the pilling there. And that really happened on the first wearing of it. It pilled very, very quickly. Now it hasn't pilled particularly much since, which is good, and I just need to, to tidy it up. But it did pill. And I was reserved to use it again on a garment, but I did love it. And I had some of this left and I wanted to use it again. So I decided I would use it in a shawl, which I think is perfect for this because it's not getting the same wear um, that a sweater would, would have. So I had more of it. This colorway is the color I use in both the shawl and the sweater. And it's number 46. It's all numbers. 
and it's a lovely oh it's, it's almost like a, a greeny blue tinge to it and I wanted to pair it up with something neutral so this is the color I used as the contrast in the shawl and it is color number 115 so it's just a cream oatmealy color and it has worked together really well and even with during the knitting of it there's been no and it's been pulled in and out of a bag because it's been on the go since June there's no sign of any pulling at all and I am thrilled with it it is beautiful beautiful yarn as I said I'm not sure whether I would knit another garment with it I've used other John Arbon yarns and they have been fabulous for garment but this particular one for me is more an accessories um yarn and this is how it has turned out so it was a really meditative meditative uh knit there was no real thinking to do for a lot of it it was just garter stitch and maybe that is partly why it, it kept, kept getting put down i can't speak today i need more caffeine Uh, because it was garter and particularly when the rows were getting longer sometimes I wanted something else to do but it was certainly a lovely way of um, it was good TV knitting for the first part and then I got to the pattern and I hadn't read ahead on the pattern and if you watch the last episode you will see that I had knit the lightweight hipster shawl and for the first time I encountered a stitch called the Indian cross stitch. I had never heard of it before. I looked it up on YouTube just uh, although it was explained in, in that particular pattern. Um, I went onto YouTube to see it been explained visually and I found that easier to, to pick up. I would never encountered this pattern before and lo and behold when I got to this stage last week what was in this pattern but the same stitch and it is just beautiful in this shawl and it's really nice in the heavier yarn I can't wait to see that blocked so it's called the Indian cross stitch so if you're working a pattern um, that includes this and you're not sure how to do it that's what you can look up on YouTube Indian cross stitch and it'll Come up with tutorials on how to do this if i can find one i'll link it in the description box once i had got to here whoops once i got to here and got the that cross stitch element of it done there was a couple more rows garter and then you left your stitches on the needle broke the yarn and put on a knit on an applied border which was had a slight lace design it was a very simple lace design and the applied border took quite a long time but it was beautiful and it was a real joy to work because all the rows are really short and you're working whereas I've been working down then you start to work across the way to put on the applied border but the pattern explains it really really well and it's very easy to to do it's not it sounds difficult but it's not in any way difficult at all and once this is blocked and opens up the the lacy edge i don't want to heavily block it because i don't want it to become too loose uh so it'll be a very light blocking and not i might um spray it rather than soak it i'm not sure what to do because I really don't want to lose the, the squishiness. Sometimes um, it can open up too much and I don't want that to happen. So this is the Charmin shawl, which is almost finished. I have the ends to weave in and to block. But it's, it's a beautiful knit. It's a simple knit. Certainly if you're quite new to shawl knitting, it's not an intimidating knit. This looks more intimidating than it is. It's, it's not and it's very well explained. It's a very clearly set out pattern. So 
that's my only finished object slash work in progress. The rest are just purely works in progress. I have been working on my February um, Lucky Dip. The Lucky Dip cal that is running in the podcast and in the podcast group is going really well. I'm seeing lots of projects appearing in the finished objects thread over there and there's lots of chatter going on as well and, and people are chatting with each other and helping each other out and supporting each other. It's lovely. The yarn that I had pulled for February was this one and it was Opal Moments of Joy which as I said the last time I'm not sure how available that is now. I've had that in the stash for quite a long time. The number, if you are looking for it, is 9082. And that's all in the, the description box below. And rather than socks this time, I decided to knit mittens. And I am knitting the Dream Fingerless Knit, Dream Fingerless Mitts by Marcia Healy, who is very little. And I'll insert a picture of the pattern here. So I have the first one done. It looks really narrow because of the uh, ribbing, but it's not, it, it fits well. This mitten was just so simple to knit up. I haven't completed any mittens before. At least I have one done and I have the second one started, but it was just a simple, pattern to get into the idea of, of mitten knitting. It's knit on 2.5 millimeter needles for me. Uh, basically whatever you knit socks on I think. I think Marcia knit hers with a 2 millimeter because she knits her socks in a 2. I do mine on 2.5 so that's the needle I used. It's a US one and a half. What I did do was I went for the smaller stitch count. So I'm on the bigger needle, but a smaller stitch count. So I'm on the 56 stitches for this. I cast on 56 and then it's ribbing and then some plain knitting and it finishes with some ribbing again. And I'll show you it on to show you how it, how it works. I don't want to give too much of the pattern away, but what I liked about it was the shaping for the thumb there isn't really any shaping you're using your ribbing to create shape you knit to basically the end of your fingers or just shy of it and the end of your thumb and the idea is that you can roll them back and this is how i would wear these most of the time i don't wear gloves usually but i did want a pair of mittens that would semi cover my hands and this is how I wear them and they're quite long in my arms so I'll probably if I don't want them tucked under my coat wear them like this so they really this one didn't take long to knit 56 stitches it's my morning knitting and it's a really simple pattern and it, it really is a good pattern if you've never um knit mittens before. I have to slow down before I say that every day. It's a good beginner's pattern. Uh, easy to follow, which is good because it's fairly new to me as well. I have started the second one, so I'm on the, the wrist part of it. I'm almost, almost there, just over halfway. In that the only modification I've made to the pattern is the the length. Uh, I have small hands so the number of rows that was called for for both the thumb and the hand I reduced. I just kept trying it on until it was the length I wanted it to be and then cast off. Marsha obviously has longer hands than I have. 
but it's just a little simple project to work on and I'm almost there. I would love to get these finished now by the end of the month, which is a week away. Isn't it? Just, yeah, it is just over a week away. I'd like to get them finished so that I'm ready for the next dive into the Lucky Dip. If you're new to the podcast, the Lucky Dip Cal is where we picked 12 skeins of yarn from Stash, no more than 100 grams per skein. So it's usually your single skeins. Doesn't matter whether it's fingering weight, double knit, iron weight, but it was 12 skeins, random skeins. We bagged them up in two individual bags and at the beginning of each month, we pull a different bag. You can join in. This is a year long knit along. So it started on the 1st of January and we're running to the 31st of December. You can join in at any time. It's one entry per month. The finished objects thread over in the Ravelry group if you just pop your picture in there. So what I'm planning to do is pull a prize every quarter um, and then a grand prize at the end of the year. So basically if you're doing all 12 skeins you have a chance, three chances every quarter to win a prize. Uh, the prize for the first quarter I will show you now and I purchased this at the beginning of the year and it has given me all my time to say that I'm giving it away. It is just beautiful. This is Lay Family Yarn, their succulent garden colorway. And I think just the colors are beautiful. There's a little mini to do the contrast. Heels, cuffs and toes if you're knitting socks. So this will be the prize that will be drawn on the 31st of March and the prizes will be drawn from the prize will be drawn from this quarter from all the entries there. So you've up to three chances to win if you've been uh, taking part every month. I have lots of other prizes that have come in. Thank you to anybody who has donated a prize. If you are a maker and want to show off your work and would like to donate a prize to either the cals or giveaways, please feel free to send me a direct message on Instagram or Ravelry and I'd love to showcase your work. What I'm going to do uh, in March after the giveaway has ended, this particular subscriber giveaway has ended, I'll show all the other prizes that have come in so far for the rest of the year. I'll do a little showcase of those then. But there's so much going on at the minute that I don't want them to get lost kind of in the the groupings. So this is anyway the Lucky Dip Cal prize for March, January, February, March and there'll be a lucky winner for that. There'll be a prize then drawn at the end of June, one at the end of September and there'll be an end of quarter prize at the end of December and then a grand prize that'll be taken from all the entries through the year. Um, so you have a good chance then of winning in that too. So that is my lucky dip for this month and it's the Dream Fingerless Mittens by Marcia Healy. The other work in progress has had a little bit of work done to it this time. The last time I'd had no progress at all. I am knitting the Imogen Tea by Carrie Bostick Hogue that is part of the Matter Anthology Book 1 and this is part of our Knitting the Books Knit Along. Just as an aside, when I say Knit Along, that covers crochet as well. Just if, if you're new and aren't aware, our Knit Alongs most certainly include crochet as well. So I'm knitting the Imogen T and I'll put a photograph of it here. And I'm knitting it in Roots and Rain yarn. And this is her label. And it's naturally dyed yarn all the way from Ottawa. This is the colour. It's a bit of a mess because this was done on my old ball winder as it was giving up the ghost. I'll show you it in a more pristine form. 
It's a beautiful shade of pink. It's very similar actually to the, I think, the, the photograph in the book. So this is a bottom up t-shirt. And I've been working on it now since the beginning of January. And it had got set aside because this week I did do some work on it. But I really wanted to get my shawl finished. But the last time I showed it to you, I was two rows past this. I'd put in a lifeline on the lace. So I've got one, two, about four inches done. I finished the decrease uh, shaping and I'm now starting into the increases again of the waist shaping. And I'm becoming more confident with it. I had said before that the lace always scares me and I certainly still need to concentrate. And I think before I start up again, I'll put in another lifeline just to be doubly sure. But I am becoming slightly more relaxed with it. And I'm really starting to enjoy this knit. And you can see the lace taking shape more now. So it's just a little t-shirt uh, for the spring. I think it'll be ideal for then. Um, it's funny in the pattern, I pr although the, I'm knitting this out of a book because that's what the knit along is, I printed, uh, scanned and printed out the pattern because I scribble all over my patterns with the waist shaping and knowing which row that I'm on in the lace, I need to keep a, a note. So there's, if anybody else looked at my notes, they wouldn't have a clue what it was about, but I keep a record of numbers and and where the shaping is so we're working there I have a few I think of a, about another four or five inches to do before I'm at the underarm and then it won't take long to work at but it's, it's a really really nice knit I'm enjoying it and this yarn is just a pleasure to work with a uh, bit of detail about the yarn, it's 100% wool, Rito Arcot and Suffolk North Country Cheviot and it's sport weight. And as I said it's naturally dyed, it's got black walnut, lac and cochineal to create this beautiful shade. So I'm enjoying this, it is part of the Knitting the Books Cal and the premise of it is that you Take one of your books that has been sitting on your shelf, an ebook that you've had for a while or um, a magazine and you choose a pattern from that to knit from. It's running until the 31st of March and there are some lovely FOs already in the Ravelry group and the thread there for the Knitting the Books Cal. And what's lovely about this, pro this knit along is that it's not specific to sweaters. I am knitting a, a t-shirt but it's anything that you have a book of it could be some of those little toys that you crochet it could be crocheted blankets it could be sweaters it can be socks that you might have a sock book and you're knitting socks anything goes in this as long as your pattern is out of a book that you have or an ebook and in your finished object photograph as well as the actual item that you've you've created if you could put a picture of the book Put the book beside it um, or your iPad with a, the book on it um, so that we can see what books that you're using. It's running until the 31st of March as I said and we have some beautiful prizes for that as well. There's two prizes that will be drawn and we have them here. One of them is this set. It's a beautiful bag by Harriet Wild wood stitches on Instagram. Beautiful Harris Tweed bag with the Highland cows and it's lined with oh closed it lined with thistles and uh that was very kindly donated by Harriet and then a viewer had donated this beautiful bear in sheep's clothing wool and I thought the colours tied in the colourways cognac and this is bare sturdy superwash blue faced Leicester 100% so it's a, a four ply fingering made yarn so that will be one of the prizes for the knitting the books 
and the other prize was very kindly donated by Kay who is from the Bead Sisters podcast and Blueberry Chicks Yarns and it's one of her bags and a skein of her yarn. So those are the prizes that are on offer for the Living the Books Cal. So if you have completed a task or completed a, a project from one of your books and you haven't posted it in the finished objects thread yet, get on and do that so that you're with a chance to win. Um, as I said, they're beautiful. And thank you again to anyone who's donated a prize. Today feels very short and sweet because I've no real finished objects, but that's okay. I am so pleased that you have joined me today. Uh, I hope to see you next week in Coffee with Kate number three. We'll see what that is, what we'll chat about then. Thank you for all your support there and for coming over to watch there. It has been so much fun um, just having the interactions there as well and all the nice comments that you made about my crafting space. Uh, last week's was a tour of this room and all its mess but uh, thank you so much for your support of that but until we have our coffee next week um, I hope you enjoy your knitting and keep safe and I'll talk to you soon <music>